Hello, I'm V.B. Price. I'm the editor of NewMexicoMercury.com. I'm here today in the Mercury Library on Insight New Mexico with Jerry Bradley, the Senior Research and Policy Analyst at New Mexico Voices for Children, an NGO that focuses basically on the social conditions needed to give our children an opportunity to thrive in one of the poorest states in the nation. Jerry is here today to discuss a certain, uh, certain really horrible injustice, I think, in our local and state tax structure. And he's also going to sort of get us all up to speed a little bit on, on uh, Voices for Children and on Kids Count, which is a, which is a wonderful data-crunching uh, uh, data uh, process that tells us how we're doing uh, in our state. So it's just wonderful to have you here, and, and uh, I look forward to a great conversation. Thank you for having me. So, Jerry, could you tell us a little bit about the Voices for Children and and kids and kids count, just to sort of get our readers and our viewers up to speed on these wonderful NGOs? New Mexico Voices for Children, as you say, is a non governmental organization. It's been been in existence for about twenty six years. It was founded by a by a set of pediatricians who were who were distressed by the by the by the social conditions faced by, by New Mexico children. And uh, those, those conditions have, have improved slightly and, uh, and gotten considerably worse in the, last, in the last 10 years or so. So we've been, uh, by, by the measures that are put together by the Kids Count program, which has also been in existence for almost that, almost that amount of time, since about 1990, the uh, the social conditions of children in the in the state have have been uh, have have been at or near the bottom. We were at the bottom for a few years, right right after and and uh, and during the recent recession, and now we're at uh, now we're at forty ninth. So we're looking at uh, we're looking at, uh, at at social conditions for children, especially uh, on indexes like. Like uh, like poverty and and food insecurity that are that are very uh, very very dire. Uh, my job within New Mexico Voices, I I work with a with uh, with a project called the the State Priorities Project, which is a national project, and I'm an economist and I work more look more broadly at uh, at state uh, uh, at the state economy. And how that comes down to affecting social conditions uh, for children. So one of the uh, one of the interesting uh, news releases that appeared from uh, from Voices of Children this month was a was to me a rather startling uh, a revelation that we are that there are 33 states ahead of New Mexico in equity or fairness of the state and local tax structures, uh, and that the major major burden of course is on the poor. Could you talk about that and 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 get our our audience up to speed on on what that actually is and what the implications uh, might be for poor children and poor families in New Mexico? The report uh that that we uh that we we discussed is called Who Pays and it's a it's a national publication that compares all states. It was put out by the Institute for Taxation and Economic Policy. While Voices is very, very much aware of what's happening in in our state, uh, it's interesting to see how we compare how we compare with other states. Uh, when the New Mexico tax system was designed in the late '60s and, and early '70s, we had uh, a tax system that w- was also pretty heavily reliant on the sales tax. Uh, here in New Mexico, it's called the gross receipts tax. But at that time, we had a very strong program for offsetting uh, the re- regressivity of the of the of the sales tax, especially the sales tax on food. That program was called the low income comprehensive tax rebate program, and that's become uh, it's it's uh, the it's become neglected over the years, and we don't have much. Uh, it doesn't have much bearing on the uh, on the state of the uh, of the uh, of, of the state's uh, tax system anymore. So now we have a, a situation where we're relying more and more and more on the gross receipts tax over the years, and less and less on the on the income tax. 
and more and more actually on the on the property tax, which many people find uh, find surprising. So the drift is to rely on the uh, on the gross receipts tax, which is the most regressive tax. It's a tax that uh, everyone has to buy uh, goods, services, clothing, barber shops, you name it. Uh, the, the gross receipts tax uh, taxes almost all goods and services with the exception of, uh, of, of, of groceries, which is one of the few good things about it now. Yeah. But the, uh, the tax system now at the, at the lowest level, the lowest 20% uh, of, of taxpayers pay around 11%, and the, and the top 10, 15, 20% pay at a, at a rate less than half of that, at around 4.8%. Wow. So we're, we're, we are an extremely uh, regressive, as they say, uh, state. That's a, that's a state where, they, uh, where, the, uh, where the lower income people pay far more than the higher income people with the, uh, under, the, under the state tax system. So if you're making $17,000 a year, let's say, and you're paying 11% tax, and you're making $330,000 a year and you're paying 5% tax. What is the, what's the implication of that in the lives of children and their families? Well, that level of, uh, of inequity, uh, where, the, where, the, uh, where the poor are paying so much more than the, than the, than the better off, the wealthy, uh, makes, it, makes the standard of living of, uh, of lower income people much more, much more difficult, and that you know that's shown in our in our very high, uh, very high poverty statistics in the state. If I could step back for a minute, Please. this what New Mexico's situation is is not only uh, is, is not only a, uh, a skewed tax system, but it's a, a state with a very very high level of uh, of inequality, and the issue of inequality has come to the fore in the last year. Year or two with Occupy Wall Street and Thomas Piketty's book on on, in, on inequality, and the Census Bureau keeps track of inequality uh, among the states. And New Mexico, uh, New Mexico is in the top third of states for for inequality. And the report wow. that w that we're talking about uh, here, who pays, does an analysis of the of the states, and and found that. Uh, I think, not surprisingly, that New Mexico's tax system makes New Mexico's inequality of of income even worse than it even worse than it starts out to be. So we're you know we're we're a state that uh, that depends heavily on uh, on federal on federal dollars, defense dollars, contract dollars to the to the labs, and that's you know, that's getting uh, getting less and less. Yeah. And uh, and and we're also now we're 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 seeing the the downside of of being a state that relies heavily on uh, on uh, on oil and natural gas. So things things can be uh, you know can can be expected to become even more even more difficult. But the, the I think the main issue is is that we are an unequal state, and the uh, and the tax system is making is making the uh, making the situation worse. So the the uh, in this context the the uh, the governor's great uh, lowering of corporate taxes last year I guess it was uh, what impact did that have on 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 this inequality? Well, a couple of you know a couple of things have of uh, have have happened because of that. I'll, you know, since you mentioned the two thousand three corporate income tax cut, I'll, I'll I'll start with that. But we we increased our I mean we we, we decreased our our uh, our corporate income tax from 8.2 percent to 5.9 percent of you know about a 40 percent cut in our uh, in in our corporate income tax, and at the same time we allowed the states and municipalities to to raise their their sales tax to raise their gross gross receipts tax increments. So so we did a couple of things in 2013. I'm you know I'm not gonna. Uh, I don't think I want to blame that entirely on the governor. I, I, I think there's plenty of blame to go around, and and the, the then speaker uh, Ken Martinez had as uh, had as much to do with the with that cut in the corporate income tax, 
and the increase in the gross receipts tax as anyone else did. Uh, that was a that was a poorly thought out poorly thought out bill that was uh, you know, that, that came through the legislative process in an, in an extremely questionable way at the very end of the at the very end of the of the legislative session, breaking I think many rules in the in the in the process. But there continues a it continues a trend. Uh, under under Governor Richardson, we cut the uh, we cut the uh, the personal income tax tremendously, and uh, and and brought in a, a deduction that no one thinks does any good. A deduction of fifty percent of capital gains income, which is uh, which is income that only high income earners earners have. So, in a six billion dollar budget, that uh, that personal income tax cut is costing us around half a billion dollars. It's, uh, wow. it continues, you know, it continues, people have forgotten about it, that, you know, which is the problem with policy, with, uh, with tax policy. It happens, and there's a, what's called a fiscal impact report, and it tells everyone how much that's going to cost, and then it's put into law, and everybody forgets about it. So the, so the, the very large uh, personal income tax cut and now the corporate income tax cut have made us a state that relies more on sales taxes and and more on property taxes and less on taxes on higher income people who can afford it and on corporations now. So I know that a lot of us, um, myself included, are not uh, are not up to speed on economic terminology, but we do know something about the differences between progressive taxes and regressive taxes. Might you just take a moment to explain the differences and, the, and, uh, and what they might mean in the context of childhood poverty in New Mexico and food insecurity and such things? A progressive tax would be a tax where the rate is higher on, uh, on higher income people and lower on lower income people. That would be uh, the uh, the personal income tax, or it would be a corporate income tax because a corporate income tax is is uh, is is paid for by by shareholders who are who are higher income people. So we have uh, we have those type of taxes, progressive taxes, that New Mexico is relying less and less and less on. A regressive tax is a tax that is higher on the on low income people. It's a tax on the on uh, on, on consumption, and we're relying on the sales tax, our, our gross receipts tax, more and more. And a property tax is also a regressive tax because it uh, because it's passed on in the uh, through rent to uh, to to low income people. So the sales tax uh, is is a it has a higher rate on lower income people and a lower rate on high income people. Yeah. It's exactly opposite of a, of, a, of a progressive tax. So we're, we, we have a tax system that is, uh, that is highly regressive and we've made, and we've made policy decisions, very, I think very, very bad policy decisions, especially, um, especially over the last uh, 12, 14 years. That have made a that have made a bad situation worse, and again made made inequality in New Mexico more severe than it uh, than, than it otherwise would have been. Yeah. Uh, why is this this really gross unfairness? Why isn't it more a part of our public discourse? Why isn't why don't people know about this uh, more than they do? I think that it's in the interests of, uh, of the people who it benefits, not not to have a lot of attention paid to. If you're going to have a have an extremely unequal uh, economic structure in in a state, which we do, and an extremely regressive tax system, making that that uh, that inequality even worse, I I think that uh, that the that the powers uh, who 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 benefit from this from this system don't really want a whole lot of uh, a whole lot of attention paid paid to it. I think that there are, that uh, that New Mexico Voices for Children, both uh, while I've been working for for the organization for the last ten years and and well before that, has been drawing attention 
to uh, to this uh, to this tax system, and now many many other uh, many other progressive organizations, uh, Progress Now, the Center for Civic Policy, uh, others are, are 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 paying more attention to this. But uh, but it's very difficult to get the uh, to get the ear of, uh, of of major media outlets. The Albuquerque Journal is not. Is not featuring front page articles on on uh, on inequality in New Mexico. So I'd I'd be satisfied with uh, with front page articles in the B section, uh, but 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 typically you're not you, you're you're not seeing that. When a major report comes out, there there will be an article in the in the in the B section of the Albuquerque Journal. But it's not a, you know that's the, the since that's the flagship newspaper that you know. People who read are, are are paying attention to that, and I think that the the, the broadcast media are paying even are, are paying paying even less attention to to inequality in the and the and the tax system. So, what is the uh, what is an example of a truly progressive tax uh, tax uh, system in America? Uh, what states really do you think are are working at the best? The the primary example of a, of a good tax system is the state of, of, uh, of, of California. They, they rely very heavily on, a, on, the, on the personal income tax and they have a, they have a surcharge on their, on, their, on their personal income tax at the top marginal rate. Uh, Representative Largo Caballero uh, has, a, has a bill in to the in, to the current uh, session of the New Mexico legislation legislature HB uh, HB 21 uh, that she presented uh, at the legislature yesterday to uh, to put in a uh, a new uh, surtax at the, that would raise the top marginal rate from a modest to a modest 5.9 percent from a from a very low 4.9 percent. So we. You know, we could move in that in in that direction. Uh, you know, I think it's it, mostly important to you know to keep that idea uh, before the before the legislators' uh, collective consciousness. But California has a you know has a has a good system. The states that have that have a good system are the states that have strong uh, personal income and corporate income taxes. The states that have weak uh, regressive tax systems are states like our, like our neighbor, Texas, uh, that relies very, very heavily on, uh, on, on property taxes to fund their, to fund their school system, which is an extraordinarily uh, bad idea. So they have, they have high sales taxes and high property taxes. So, we, New Mexico has a, has a somewhat better, better system than. Uh, than, than Texas, but a, a far, far worse system than the, than the state of California. Are there any other st states in the Mountain West uh, like California, or, or, or are they all like us? One, one of the advantages that, that we have is, and, and there are some other states in the Mountain West that have similar advantages, as Wyoming is the, is the uh, Prime example: We have we have the opportunity of, of, uh, of, getting some amount of our revenues through the through taxes on, on oil and natural gas. Back earlier in my in my career, looking at taxes, we we had we had a significant amount of, of coal and and in, and even uranium, which had many negatives. But we had we had a, we had a pretty fair amount of of. Uh, of severance tax revenue from from uranium, but now now the severance taxes, and the and the and the royalties and the distributions from the land grant permanent fund, make it make it uh, make it possible for New Mexico to have, uh, you know, some you know fairly respectable amount of investment in in education, and 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 healthcare and public safety that otherwise. We, we we wouldn't be able to given our given our level of, uh, of 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 poverty. So there's that there's that aspect which uh, you know which we which we haven't touched on. You know, periodically we'll hear from the oil and natural gas industry that they're that, that they're that they're overtaxed. But I I think that's not to be not to be taken seriously. And we would we would have a 
And we would have a far, we, we have a bad tax system, frankly, mm. but we would have a far worse tax system if we didn't have a, if we didn't have a significant share of our of our revenues coming from uh, from taxes and and uh, and other distributions on on uh, on oil and natural gas. So how would we um, how would we say that this regressive structure that we have tax structure that we have how does this play into New Mexico's almost dead last status in the well-being of children? I, I think that it's you know there's a direct relationship <coughs> between that. Uh, you know, we are, our, our regressive, regressive tax system makes it, makes it harder to raise an adequate amount of revenue. And I'll, I'll kind of back up and, back up and explain that. Because we have a, we have a, an unequal economy as far as, uh, as far as income shares, and a tax system that relies less and less on, uh, on, on income, if we had a if we had a progressive tax system, we'd be taxing the growing share of uh, of, of, of of income more. Right. But but we have a we have a regressive tax system, so we're we're taxing uh, taxing the, the the dwindling share of, uh, of 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 tax base. So the tax base is you know is growing at the high end, and the tax base is is uh, is is uh, declining at the at the at the low end, and we're and we're taxing the uh, we're taxing people at the at the at the low end. So we're we are less. Uh, you know, we had we had some very massive uh, cuts in uh, in in uh, kindergarten to twelfth grade education. Massive cuts in higher education uh, spending during the you know during the years of the of the of the of the national recession. Right. And we have we have barely come back from from the levels of expenditure of state government expenditure during during those years. Uh, state expenditures dropped by twenty percent in the state, uh, and they were partially made up by by, uh, by by the federal recovery act, but that went away in in uh, in, in in pretty short order. So I, I think that the you know the fact that we have a, a regressive tax system means that we're that we're not able to not able to keep up with the uh, with the with the needs for for higher education for for public education for for health care in the in the state and uh, you know we've we've done things like the 2013 corporate income taxes that will make things that much worse. So we see that. Um <clears throat> that we have now risen to 49th. Uh, but, but there's also some indication that uh, as Kids Count and, and Voices for Children point out that we've declined in certain areas of that up and, and we've stayed kind of, kind of the same in certain other areas. Could you describe how we are, where we are at the moment uh, in terms of child well-being? We're, we're, we're back and forth with some of the worst uh, we're states for for child well-being in the in the country. We're, we we play leapfrog with uh, with with Mississippi. Uh, I don't think Mississippi is a state that that many of us think that it should be should be any kind of a of, of a model. Uh, we're uh, you know going going back and forth with Mississippi is is is, is not where you want to be. Inequality and a, and, a, and, a, and a regressive tax system make, make it more difficult for, for living standards for, uh, for, for low-income people to, to improve. Now, one, one thing that I didn't touch on is you know, how much of you know, any, any, uh, any economic growth, how, many, how much of any, of any income growth in the, in the state is going to the top 1%. And that's about, since the recession, about 40% of, uh, of income growth in the state of New Mexico has gone to the, uh, has gone to the top uh, 1%, wow. according to a study by the Economic Policy Institute that came out uh, last week. So the rest, uh, the other 99% of, of, of New Mexico households are, uh, are, uh, are are splitting up that other that other sixty percent. It's very difficult to see that uh, that the that the income growth 
for the for the rest of the uh, of of the population, the other ninety nine percent is going to be able to support any any sort of substantial uh, improvements in the in 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 the standard of living in in the state when we when we have that level of inequality. I, I mean that that that's part of what the you know of what the problem is. Economists look always at, at per capita income. Yeah. Um, but per capita income is is income divided by population, and it completely masks the impact of uh, of, uh, of 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 inequality. So we you know we uh, we we may be experiencing some uh, some economic growth, some income growth in the state of New Mexico, but a very very large share of that uh, of that of that income growth is going to the uh, going to the top one percent, making it very very difficult for us to. You know, for us at New Mexico Voices to see the uh, to see the prospect of uh, of any kind of broad broadly shared uh, improvement in, uh, in 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 living standards here in the state. So, I know Voices for Children has a package of prescriptions. Uh, could you sort of summarize what Voices for Children would like to see happen in the long run to to rectify the inequality and also to Improve improve the well-being of children in our state. Well, in the current in the current uh, session of the New Mexico Legislature, uh, we we have a lot of we have a lot of uh, of defensive ideas. We have we have we have many things in the in the tax system, especially that we'd like to we'd like to uh, to keep from getting worse. And may and uh, there there are plenty idea of of ideas coming from. Uh, from legislators uh, aligned with some some national groups uh, like Alec, that uh, that um, you know that that are that are there to make the make the tax system even more re regressive than it is. Our, our idea is you know one one good thing about our uh, about our tax system is we have something called the Working Families Tax Credit, which came in about ten years ago under uh, under under uh, Bill Richardson, and we we rebate about ten percent of the of the of the federal earned income tax credit to the uh, to to families in New Mexico, we would like to increase that to fifteen percent of the of the federal earned income uh, earned income credit. Uh, we we would you know we would definitely like to see, although uh, you know under this environment it's very difficult to see it happening. We we'd like to see us uh, moving to uh, to to. To remedy some of the damage that was caused by the 2003 uh, personal income tax cuts, uh, we'd like to we'd like to see some some increases at the at the top levels of uh, of the uh, of of the of the personal income tax, and we you know we'd like to we we would definitely like to see some improvements. Uh, Senator Worth has uh, Senator Peter Worth from Santa Fe has definitely improved. Uh, you know, championed over ten years uh, improvements to the corporate income tax, a different way of of allocating in income and taxing uh, corporate income in in the state. So we're you know we're we're uh, we have a full we have a full agenda of uh, of, uh, of 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 tax policy, of better tax policy that we would uh, that we that we'd like to see in the state. Uh, you know, I think. Increasing the minimum wage, uh, Senator. I'm sorry, Representative uh, Lucky Varela of Santa Fe has a has a bill that will be heard tomorrow uh, on, on Friday uh, to to increase the state minimum wage to ten dollars and ten cents, which is a which would be a, a big step in the in the right direction. Modest from some points of view. So we'll be we'll be supporting the. Supporting uh, the increases in the minimum wage, but you know, and some really bad ideas. Uh, we, the idea of uh, of uh, implementing, bringing New Mexico into line with the with the states of the old Confederacy, and in, increase in in bringing in right to work for less, right, 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 right. to uh, to labor, to to weaken uh, what we have of a, of a of a labor movement, and the labor movement. Is the strongest force for combating inequality in the in the economy, and uh, and and it, putting in the right to work for less bill would uh, would uh, m you know move us 
pretty significantly in the direction of uh, of uh, watering down the the influence of the of the labor movement in the in the state. Well, if 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 uh, if Voices for Children had had a message to send to people who say, for instance, look at the Mercury, who are all most of them very active in in public life in one way or another. What would that message be? What is the what is the central thing we could do to help improve this really hor- horrifically unfair and unjust situation? What I tell my what I tell my progressive friends and and I I'm not always I'm not always sure that it's uh, uh, it's sexy enough for 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 <laughs> progressives, but getting involved at the at the at the state level in 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 uh, House races and in, in state senate races, and becoming involved in at at that level, uh, you know, maybe maybe even lesser lesser offices than that. But the the ones that I've been paying attention to for for a long time have been have been uh, have been at the state level. There 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 is room in New Mexico for for citizen involvement in uh, in in legislative races. There there's there's room for for. Uh, for citizen involvement at the at the legislature, as far as as uh, as citizen lobbying and and uh, and and participating in the committee process in in Santa Fe, it can be it can be time consuming and sometimes it can be very frustrating because the you know because of the because the process isn't set up for for citizens. It's set up for it's set up for legislators. So there can be. There can be a lot of slippage in in uh, in when bills are going to be heard, as far as time, or even days or weeks. But uh, <laughs> but, but uh, you know, for for people you know who 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 pay attention to the to to the Mercury, you know, to me, you know, it would be the citizen involvement in this, and citizen involvement in tax policy. Yeah. Uh, you know, the more you know, I I saw. In a in a committee hearing that I was in yesterday, I saw seven or eight progressive organizations send people uh, to testify on uh, on Representative Largo Caballero's bill to to increase the the, the income tax top marginal rate. So the, it is happening. And Twenty years ago, the tax system and tax policy was uh, was the preserve of very few people, yeah. you know, very few powerful legislators, and very you know very. Uh, very few powerful uh, business people. That the, we we can become involved, and that would be, you know, I I would love to see more of that. The articles you've written for us have really been very very useful on that score. Uh, I would like just to ask one more sort of broad question: Is there any when it comes to child well-being? What is the most right now the most desperate and most important ill that needs to be remedied? I, I think that as, as far as public policy goes, the most direct ill that we can that we can we can affect is to is to bring all of chil- all children who qualify into into the Medicaid program in the in the, in the state of New Mexico. We we have we have seen uh, the administration has expanded Medicaid. Uh, has made it possible to 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 expand Medicaid, uh, and uh, under the under the Affordable Care Act under Obamacare, but the but we have been lagging in the numbers of children that we uh, that we can that, that we have enrolled in Medicaid. That would be that would be one concrete thing that 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 we that we as a state could be doing is reaching out, enrolling all of those children, making sure all of them. All the children that qualify for health insurance under Medicaid are in, are enrolled in that program. Another would be, we have a you know we have a we have a a long waiting list for the uh, for the uh, for the child care assistance program. And my my colleague uh, Bill Jordan, our our legislative director, has has been tirelessly pointing out that uh, it's just unacceptable to have a to have a long waiting list for for uh, for child care. Uh, Assistance in 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 the state, 
and uh, you know, it'd be it would it would be great if we could eliminate that uh, that waiting list. So the way the waiting list is now, those the, those children are going to be in high school by the time they, by the time they, um, they they've worked their way through the through through the the, the waiting list. So so that th those two things th those two things would come to me. As you know, as the as the as the most direct ways that we could that we could affect uh, that we could affect child uh, child well being in New Mexico. There are there are you know there are there are many others, including food food insecurity, which is severe in New Mexico. Severe, severe. Jerry, I'm I'm afraid our time is up, but I have really enjoyed this, and I hope we can we can talk again in the future about these really important and crucial and, and crucial issues. And I'm gonna I'm gonna pay a lot more attention to regressive taxes in New Mexico, and I'm sure our readers will too. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. It's not, not every day I get, to, I get to talk about my passion, which is improving the tax system in the state of New Mexico. Thank you.